Someone asked me if I was the class clown. I said I wasn't, but I used to write for the class clown. And it sort of was true. I would instigate uh, practical jokes or suggest things. I would say something quietly, which the, the, someone else would then repeat louder and get the laugh, you know, and I thought, well, gee, you know, he got the laugh, I wrote the line, you know. So, but uh, there's, uh, you know, there's something to be said for both roles. <laughs> I know you're gonna dig this. Get, get, fu get funky with me. How's everybody doing today? So here I am on the north shore of Chicago, Glencoe area, doing a video about Harold Ramis. Harold Ramis actor in Stripes, uh, I believe his name is Russell in Stripes, uh, Egon, Ghostbusters, director of Vacation, one of my favorite movies of all time, Groundhog Day, Caddyshack, Year One, Analyze This, incredibly talented man, and sadly, he passed away in this house right here from uh, an infection, it's an, it an auto, I'm trying to think of, vasculitis, I'm gonna have to look it up again, one second. Auto, autoimmune inflammatory vasculitis. And he lost the ability to walk, actually. And then after relearning how to walk, sadly, he passed away from complications from the, from the disease. Uh, I believe it was February 24th, 2014. And it was in this house right here. This was his house. And you can hear the ice cream man in the background. We're gonna go visit his final resting place but I thought you'd like to see his home. It's beautiful. I know that I've seen aerial views. It goes far back, but his house is right here. Harold Ramos. A lot of, like, um, a lot of celebrities, a lot of huge celebrities always move back to their hometown or never leave. They may, may make it big in Hollywood, but especially Chicago, it seems. So a lot of celebrities that live in Chicago and Harold Ramos was a Chicagoan and dear to his heart and this is an impressive house. So here it is right here. Hard to kind of see. I'm going to get some better shots, but it is a private home. I don't know. There is a car that's driving, but I'm not sure who lives there now. But it's a beautiful, beautiful house, as you can see. It's huge. And so just all the way back. But that's Harold Ramis's house. There you go. That's a better shot of his house right there. Beautiful, beautiful. And I believe when he lived here, I think there were bushes in front or a lot more uh, trees and stuff. I'm not sure. These trees are freshly planted though. Well, not freshly planted, just sodded, I guess, around the bottom. Or I'm, you know what? I'm not a gardener. I'm not paid to be one. So I don't know what the hell's around the bottom of it. Excuse my language. But I believe there was more bushes or trees. It was a little more obscured from the road. But yeah, you see a three car garage, pretty huge. All right, let's go see Harold Ramis' final resting place and pay our respects. Now, I did hear that the house sold for around $2.5 million, but in 2015, when it was up for sale, uh, the listing agent said that during the staging process, that's when the, they get the house ready for prospective buyers to come and take a look, they found all of Harold's original movie scripts for Animal House, Ghostbusters, Groundhog Day, just sitting in a cardboard box. Uh, in the unfinished basement and they also found a Ghostbusters belt that still had the residual white goop from the Marshmallow Man. That's crazy. Here's an aerial view of the house. Not Harold Ramis, Ruth and Nathan. I hope they rest in peacefully. I'm here at Shalom Memorial Park in Arlington Heights, Illinois, north of Chicago. And 
walking towards where I believe Harold Ramis is laid to rest. And um, I think he should be up back here along these this tree line somewhere. From what I've gathered, from what I've, from the research I've done, and it's a flat grave and they're difficult to see in the ground here. Um, the grass isn't too long, but it's not, uh, not too easy. But we can do this in real time, try and find them together. It's never as easy as it seems, I'm telling you. There's a Harold. Oh, that's Harold. Oh, there, there we go. Here we are. I didn't think that was going to be that. And it reads, Harold Allen Ramos. Son, brother, husband, father, friend, teacher, student, creative force, generous spirit, lover of life, loved by all. November 21st, 1944 to February 24th, 2014. So the this is the very, very back. This took me a long time to get up here. Very, very back of the cemetery, Solomon Memorial Park. We're all the way around to the back. And the address on Find a Grave is pretty accurate. So I'll give you a little bit of a backstory on Harold Ramis and his career. He actually began his career in comedy as a writer for Playboy Magazine's Party Jokes page. And while holding down this day job at night, he was performing as part of Chicago's famed Second City Comedy Troupe, where he worked alongside John Belushi, Gilda Radner, Bill Murray. When it came time for uh, Lauren Michaels to cast a new show called Saturday Night Live, Harold Ramis did not get a part on it. But not to be outdone... He went along with Andrea Martin, John Candy, Eugene Levy, and Joe Flaherty and founded the Canadian-based comedy series SCTV in 1976. He says that at SCTV, we were virtually self-directed. Whoever wrote the piece pretty much determined how the piece was going to play. We directed each other. Joe Flaherty kind of appointed himself my director. He'd tell me stuff like, open your eyes real big. Now, in 1978, Harold co-wrote the comedy Animal House, and because of its success, he was able to pretty much write his own ticket in Hollywood. When it became a hit, he worked out a deal that would allow him to direct the next movie that he wrote, and his first writing and directing job was Caddyshack. And while Harold is sometimes thought of as strictly an actor, he actually only acted in a handful of films, the Ghostbusters series, as good as it gets. His real success was behind the camera, Analyze This, Groundhog Day, Bedazzled, all the movies that I mentioned before. He did for a long time live in Brentwood, California with his wife Erica and their two sons, and he also has a daughter from a previous marriage until he decided to move the whole family back to his hometown of Chicago. It was there that he passed away on February 24th, 2014, from complications from autoimmune inflammatory vasculitis. So when you read about Harold Ramis, uh, apparently he was like the um, intellectual of the group, a second city, uh, and on film sets. And he always played that type of role. And that's how we kind of look at him as, you know, the smart one, that sharp wit, witty comebacks, and, uh, Quips. And 56, 14, so he's 70 years old when he passed. That's young. It's not, that's not old. I don't think that's old. You know, what a shame. He was so, so talented. Harold Ramis, rest in peace. Brought us much, a lot of laughter. And you're greatly missed. Peace. And I hope you rest in peace with you, man. Peace out.